While the thin blue line and the act of killing may be two starkly different documentaries in their subject matters, both films, as Norman Denzen writes, experiment with different ways of presenting an interview text. This video essay hopes to examine the ways in which these films utilise the formal features of interviews, such as the interview setting, the position and framing of the subject, as well as lighting, to comment on the issues of truth and authoritative knowledge within their respective films. The foremost way in which filmmakers Errol Morris and Joshua Oppenheimer comment on the issues of truth and authoritative knowledge in their films is through their portrayals of their interviewees. For example, in The Thin Blue Line, the treatment of David Harris contrasts with that of Gus Rose. David Harris sits, alone, wearing an orange jumpsuit in a dark room with red and green lights surrounding him. In contrast, Gus Rose, another interviewee, sits with a map of Dallas behind him wearing a suit. From the mise-en-scene of both shots, we may infer that Harris is a shadowy character and doubt is placed on his version of the truth. Gus Rose, however, is indicated to be a respected official authority, and we may interpret that he has authoritative knowledge to speak the truth. This illustrates, as Cunningham points out, how easily we can be deceived by visual images and appearances. Aside from mise-en-scene, filmmakers Joshua Oppenheimer and Errol Morris also comment on issues of truth and authoritative knowledge via the positioning and framing of their subjects. In the thin blue line, the shots and framing of the interviews are formulaic. The subject sits alone framed at the centre of a static shop. With this method, all narratives are given equal weight and compete against one another. In this way, Errol Morris comments on the subjectivity of the truth. The concept of authoritative knowledge is also undermined as each interviewee may contradict another. In the act of killing, interviews are conducted very differently. Subjects are free to move about in the world and in the frame. This illustrates the freedom of Anwar Congo and the other gangsters. Not only this, but the subjects in the act of killing are free to interact with one another, backing up one another's narratives about the past. In this way, subjects are complicit in one another's version of the truth. Here we encounter what Linda Williams acknowledges as the problem of figuring traumatic historical truths by any single mirror with a memory. There are many different and indirect refractions. We are aware that there is a narrative missing here, and that we may only be receiving a partial or embellished truth, thus undermining the authoritative knowledge of Anwar Congo and the other gangsters. Another decision made by both filmmakers in their respective searches for truth is whether to stage their interviews, such as in the case of R.L. Morris, or have the more guerrilla style, as with Oppenheimer. In the case of Joshua Oppenheimer, it is clear he's aware of his subject's tendency to perform to, as Denzin writes, turn the interview into a performance text. Oppenheimer's more casual method of interviewing his subjects seems a strategic way to find the truth. You may catch them off guard. A good example of this can be seen during Oppenheimer's exchange with Anwar Congo, where Congo is stripped of his regular bravado by Oppenheimer. <laughs> In Anwar's vulnerability, we find truth. This, it seems, is a comment on truth from Oppenheimer illustrating that Anwar's reality lies within a more private self than is usually shown to the camera. Morris's interviews, on the other hand, are very clearly staged. In the words of Dillard, the interview's meanings are contextual, improvised and performative, and it is through this formal context that we become aware of the interviewee's performances of their own narratives. An example of this performance could be seen with Mrs. Miller, and in the staged interviews her performativity is blatant when compared against the more measured accounts of the other interviewees. In this way, Morris exposes Mrs. Miller's tendency to perform, casting doubt on her account of the truth and her perceived authoritative knowledge. Overall, it seems that Errol Morris and Joshua Oppenheimer make full use of the formal features of their interviews, such as setting, positioning, framing, as well as lighting in order to comment on who has the authoritative knowledge and power to speak the truth.